He's come to know. Oh, so he's going back to find ooh, what's left of his world. The world he left behind not so long ago. Said he's going back to find a simpler place in time. Oh, yes, he is. And I'll be with him on that midnight train to Georgia. That was grits and gravy. Okay, well, who's grits and who's gravy? <laughs> I'm the grits and she's the sauce on top. Oh. 
Okay. We get that question a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know, this is the Louisiana Entertainment Experience. I'm meeting with the Grits and Gravy crew. This is Sharon and Randy, mm -hmm. and we're going to talk about uh, their experience and their travels and how they got involved in contributing to Louisiana culture and music. So, Sharon, let's start with you. Okay. How did you uh, get involved in all of this uh, music stuff? Well, actually, of course, like a lot of us, I started in the church, and there was a time when we weren't even allowed to listen to secular music at all. We, you know, just could only sing gospel, and we all we could listen to was gospel. Wow, yeah. I've that been in that experience. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> How about you, Ray? Um, I started playing on the Rob Bernard show uh, <laughs> channel 10 years ago. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> we were just talking about that. That's why I'm bringing it up. But uh, I started in, in high school just playing guitar with some friends, you know, and, mm -hmm. and really I was telling him about that TV show, but that actually did happen on Channel 10. And before I got out of high school, I was making as much money as my dad at playing music because because the TV show were booking proms and private parties and stuff. Yeah. So I thought, wow, this is for me. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, so I got hooked into it pretty hard at an early, you know, early age. Yeah. Well, how did y'all hook up and start playing music? Well, we were just discussing your... Uh, your Former guest here, Sarah Russo. Um, she Sarah called who? into Sarah Russo. Oh, 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 yeah, I think I remember her. Yeah, you remember her. Huh? <laughs> She's not Sarah. About. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to give a shout out to Sarah. Sarah actually hooked us up, which is a great thing. We've, uh, I've really been enjoying playing with, with Sharana, and uh, we, we just have a ball gigging together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have Sarah to thank for it. Oh, awesome. How many years y'all been doing this stuff? We met actually July of 2018, so it hasn't even been a year yet. Yeah. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yes. Awesome. And did you uh, arrest Randy? Is that really how y'all met? Did you take him to jail or anything? What happened there? She's probably wanted to pull a gun on me a few times. Yeah. I did have this little thing. I would call him Daddy Dearest. Yeah. <laughs> but when he starts scolding me or, you know, getting on me about something, and we all, you know, everyone has that, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. and you're working together, you know, you, you become family. Yeah. And uh, I, I would call him Daddy Dearest. Yeah. <laughs> and you're a police officer, bud? Yes, actually I am. I'm a sheriff with a Lafayette Parish Sheriff. Oh, wow. Office. Mm -hmm. Yes. So yes. if I get a ticket, no. <laughs> 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 and Randy, what's your regular day gig? Uh, I'm pretty much semi-retired now, you know, I, I, I had a tractor service business for a while during the day, and I was doing that pretty steady for the last four or five years, oh, wow. and before that I was doing really music full-time because I was playing four or five, six nights a week. I had a house band gig in Lake Charles at the Hilton there several years back, and I did that for like five or six years running, so that was... You know, I didn't have time for a day job because I had a day job playing music. Yeah. Uh, and one thing I've always kind of taken pride in is my whole life I've made a living playing music. But uh, I will admit it's gotten a little tougher lately, but, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, hopefully this will help you out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so give us a little history about yourself. Where are you originally from? Actually, I'm originally from Delaware, actually, the first state. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, I was born and raised there, graduated from Laurel Senior High. And uh, I moved to Dallas, Texas, and from Dallas, Texas, <laughs> excuse me, I moved to Lafayette, Louisiana to help a friend uh, start a ministry. They ended up moving the ministry to uh, Houston, and I decided oh. to stay here in Lafayette. And I've been here in Lafayette for like 19 years, so I'm actually a transplant now. Wow, so <laughs> you didn't sing a gospel song earlier. <laughs> you're a solid yeah, actually, citizen you're right. man. I'm, and it's so funny because like I said one mm -hmm. time that's all I, I was doing was gospel yeah. you know I was really deep into you know the ministry and uh, just you know yeah that's all I would sing but now I've kind of ventured out I've invited several uh, worship team leaders mm -hmm. to come on the show I got a few of them that keep saying yeah I'm gonna come I'm gonna come but uh, <laughs> anyway uh and we have some of those guys coming, but we'll have to have you come back and do some more. Sure. And, and sing some of that sure. again. I, you, I will. Yeah. And I have sang at uh, Sarah's church. You know, yeah. And some worship, praise and worship there. Well, not to start any mess, but since I got you and put you on the spot, <laughs> what is your opinion of some people like, uh, I don't know if you're all this controversy that Lauren Daigle comes under. 
about uh, yes. you know, being on the Ellen DeGeneres show and some of the nasty things that's been said about it. Yes, you know? yes. Uh, and I don't agree with that um, because that's kind of what I came out of. It was very strict, and I was actually cast out, you know, mm-hmm. of my church, for, you know, a few times for different things of that nature, like wanting to sing, you know, yeah. other types of music, things of that nature. And I feel like God gives us this gift, and to me, it's to give, you know, bring joy to others, yeah. you know, and that's what she's doing. She's bringing joy mm-hmm. to others. She's not harming anyone. You know, she's using that gift and she's sharing it with the world. And yeah. I think that's what he wanted us to do. Share your gift with the world. And she does it in a tasteful way. And mm-hmm. so do I. Yeah. So do we. So. Well, I, I've always struggled <clears throat> with that attitude from, uh, say, pastors or, or people who consider themselves pastors or right. whatnot. Uh, leaders that would point fingers and do things. But um, in certain situations, why is it always music? Now, I know there's a lot of guys out there that will debate biblically. You know, why music is different than anything else. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of oil field workers that have a lot of questionable stuff hanging on the walls of their, their offices and things like that. That's you know, and why why are musicians held to a different standard right. than those guys, you know, when it comes to those type of things? And exactly. I could go into more detail, but I could sit here and talk about that all night long and give <laughs> oh, you yeah. examples. Of, Me too. A lot of different examples about it. But, <laughs> I just thought, I, I felt the same way. I was like, you know, if, if there's someone in that uh, arena or in that area, he has somebody who's sitting on the fence that, you know, uh, kind of wants to go to church but not, but thinks churches are hypocritical or whatnot, and then they hear a Lauren Daigle song or anybody else, you know, right, right. Uh, of those guys that say cross over. Uh, right. And it makes them say, hey, you know, maybe I need to go to church. Because I've met people like that. Mm-hmm. You know, I've had people okay. here like that that say, you know what? One fella here that didn't, he was reluctant to say it on camera or whatnot. I'm not going to point him out. But he right. he was somebody that did that, that said that, you know, he heard, you know, some of Lauren Daigle's music. And he and it, it kind of steered him back away from where he was going. I said, well, mm-hmm. you know, there's a prime example. Yes, you know? exactly. But, you know, I don't tend to steer away from controversy, but, you know. <laughs> well, I guess it's good I live in Arnaville because I don't know what y'all are talking about. <laughs> I live a very sheltered life. Over there. Yes, he does. Arnaldville, isn't that like in the Ron Eads area of Arnaldville? Yes, Arnaldville? it is. Yeah. Ron lives pretty close to me. Oh, Great sax player. We will pray for you. Yeah. <laughs> y'all should. <laughs> uh, but give us your, uh, some history on you, Randy, where you... Well, you know, I, as I said before, I you know, just started playing in music and when I was in high school and ended up, um, we, we put together a band in Baton Rouge back in the early 70s called Whiskey River and we, uh, we ended up hooking up with a manager named Mac Davis, not the Mac Davis, mm-hmm. but this gentleman's name is Mac Davis. He put us on three showcases in Houston and Dallas. <clears throat> and from there, we went on the road for years playing all these big showcase rooms. We were a big show band, kind of. Mm-hmm. And uh, <clears throat> we ended up in Colorado for 10 of those years. And uh, we morphed into a band called Domino, did a CD. Uh, had pretty good success up there, really did. And uh, anyway, at, at some point, that band split up. I moved back here and uh, just been got married, raised some kids, and mm-hmm. <laughs> and been loving, you know, I was, I was, I had a little trepidation about moving back to Louisiana, because I just wasn't sure I wanted to, because I loved it up in Colorado, but um, once I got here and started mixing up with my family, and my folks were starting to, you know, get old, and I said, well, it might be time to move back, and never regretted it, I wouldn't have met my wife and my current, and have my current kids now, and, yeah which I love to death. I have a great family and real proud of them. Two great kids. And uh, just been uh, slaying the dragons around here, you know, playing <laughs> these nightclubs and mm-hmm. casinos. and The taco circuit? Yeah. That's yeah. It. <laughs> the, uh, the Mexican food restaurant circuit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what were your influences early on? What well, in, in the early days, uh, you know, I was... You know, I went to the original Woodstock uh, in 1969, wow. and I, I, I was influenced heavily by all the bands that, you know, the 
all the bands that play there, Santana and uh, a lot of, I listened to a lot of blues rock back then to Eric Clapton and that kind of stuff. Yeah. And eventually Stevie Ray Vaughan, which was post Woodstock, obviously. Um, but, you know, I was real influenced by that whole era, you know, the early, late 60s, early 70s, because that's when I was a real young man, just kind of uh, honing my chops, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And um, anyway, as, as time went and I got a little bit older, I started getting a little bit more into the songwriter, acoustic guitar songwriter type vibe, you know. Yeah. And um, I'm trying to put out original CD as we speak, you know, hoping to... Uh, my wife said, once I get it out, she will finally clean our closet. You know, so <laughs> we have a bet going to see who can do it first. <laughs> there you go. What about you, Sharon? What, what influenced you? Um, like Probably. I said, at first, I started, I mean, we weren't allowed to listen to any secular music. But again, my brothers, when my parents would leave the house, Mm -hmm. They would, you know, play the music. So I grew up listening to, like, Eric Clapton, like you said, a heart. I love heart. Mm -hmm. um, Pat Benatar, um, Aretha Franklin, Maria Maldauer. Um, I listened to pretty much everything. Yeah. So I, I, I'm not really in a box as far as music, per se. There's a lot of different artists that I love, and my children are the same way. They love all types of music. Just music. Yeah, that's one of the joys of working with Sharama. She, <laughs> she does have a, a wide palette. You know, she likes a lot of different stuff, which is very cool. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, I'm kind of that way, too. I'm, I try to dip into a little bit of all, a lot of different styles, you know. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we, we share that passion. That's awesome. Well, y'all knew this question was coming. What's your favorite Louisiana dish? Oh, Ooh, lovely. that's easy. That's easy for me. <laughs> <laughs> I love gumbo, but again, I love seafood gumbo. And a lot of people here make the sausage and, you know, chicken and chicken sausage, and sausage yeah. gumbo a lot. But I love seafood gumbo. That's my favorite. Seafood. That yes. is good stuff. Yes. Uh, I'm a ball crawfish guy. That's That's got to be my all-time favorite. <laughs> now, if I was stuck on an island uh, and I could eat nothing else... Then it'll probably be crawfish ate too fake. Bill crawfish. <laughs> I mean, crawfish. you can only eat so many ball crawfish. You know? Oh, that's it. He just summons Wilson to go get some, right? <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> so, how many years y'all been at this? I mean, um, your career was. Wow. Like I said, I started young. I started in church. You know, singing. My dad was a pastor, a Baptist pa pastor. So I started singing in church. Um, How old were you? Oh, gosh. Probably about like nine. Yeah, about nine so years old. So you only been at this 10 years? <laughs> yeah. I was just about ready to say, I thought we weren't going to have to talk about how long we've been doing this. <laughs> but like I said, a lot of that was in church, you know, and then yeah. I started venturing yeah. out, you know. And mm -hmm. listening to other music. Like I said, when my brothers were home, parents were gone, they would play other music. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. What about you? How long have you been doing this? Two or three years? Yeah, at least. Um, I've been doing it for uh, seven or eight months with Sharona. Uh -huh. <laughs> so that's when my career started, okay. right there. All right. So long, eight months. <laughs> no, I, um, I've been doing it, like I said, since the early 70s, you know, mm -hmm. a long time. I worked on the road for years and years and years. Uh, even in Colorado, when we were there, we played the ski resort circuit, you know, a lot mm -hmm. of Aspen, Vail, uh, Winter Park, Breckenridge, all those. And it's kind of a different market there because you, you didn't, here it's all one night, it was there. It's, yeah. it's either a whole week or two weeks or even up to a month. You play at one place and usually five, six, even seven nights a week. So it was a lot easier to make a good living up there, you know, because of that. Um, but I did that for years. And when we would leave Colorado, it was usually to go play a circuit in the Midwest. You know, we played a lot between Denver and Chicago when we'd get out on the road. This is after we lived in Denver. And um, and then, you know, like I said, eventually I moved back to Louisiana and been just doing it around here ever since. Mm -hmm. I did have a, another iteration of Domino when I moved here, and we used to play Poets and all those places around here. And, mm -hmm. and um, <clears throat> that was a band that... Uh, Played this area. We we toured a lot around the Gulf Coast, Florida, and Georgia, and Alabama. Yeah. What's and, your most memorable experience you had playing? Oh Lord Jesus! <laughs> uh, <laughs> a lot of years. Uh, just uh, 
I, I guess my fondest memories go back to my Colorado days, you know. Mm -hmm. we, just, we just had a huge time up there. We were a very popular band. We, uh, we had a, a, a girl in the group at the time who was extremely good singer uh, and very good entertainer. And uh, a lot of the places we played, we literally had lines out the door waiting to hear us because this girl was just that good of an entertainer. So it made for a lot of fun, fun yeah. gigs, you know, and um, we were able to do a, open big shows for a lot of people like, you know, back back then, Freddie King before he died, Taj Mahal, artists like that. You know, we opened up a lot of big shows, Nitty Gritty Dirt Band, um, Delbert McClinton. Um, was it wrong with Delbert when, when you opened for him? Pardon? I said, was it wrong with Delbert when you opened for him? Oh no, he wasn't. He wasn't. I mean, he might have been. Yeah. Maybe I just I didn't know him until yeah. recently. So maybe he was with him. Mm -hmm. I'm have to ask him that question because uh, the place we opened shows for him is a, a, a little showcase room in Evergreen, Colorado, which is really where I lived. It was outside of Denver, and um, <clears throat> anyway, he would. Uh, he might have been playing with him yeah. then, and that's he that's the been. room that uh, he played when he came to our area. Yeah. Most memorable experience? Wow, I think the most memorable experience for me is performing at Blue Monday because that's where I, you know, met Sarah and then that's what mm -hmm. got me to singing professionally because this is the most that I've sang on a professional level, like, you know, being able to be paid <laughs> to do what I do yeah. um, on a regular basis. Um, this past year, it's been, it's just really been a blessing and um, I'm just thankful to John Williams uh, for the Blue Monday mm -hmm. and the things that we do there that, that has connected me with so many different artists. And we did a um, tribute to Aretha Franklin where there were yeah. several ladies, you know, that sang on stage together. That was a very memorable experience for that me. I really a, enjoyed it. That was a great oh, gig. I enjoyed mm -hmm. it. We had so much fun doing mm -hmm. that gig. So much fun. And it's just, I mean, it's been a wonderful ride ever since then because, like I said, I've connected with so many other artists yeah, and so many wonderful people that are, like, immense talent, but it's just they're so humble. Mm -hmm. It's like, they're like, I mean, just, it's, I'm amazed at the humbleness of yeah. the people that I've met, like for Ronnie Eads, for one, just so humble, so much talent, you know, um, Lee Zeno, Alan Zeno, mm -hmm. people like that. Um it's, it's so many that I could name. I probably should yeah. stop naming names because I can't name everybody. But yeah. all the Blue Monday family, I'm thankful for them. My best friend, Pauline Williams, I mean, uh, Ryan, she prays for me continually. There's even one gig I did where I, I didn't think I was going to be able to do it. I called her. I said, I'm hoarse. I can't even I can't even talk. I said, yeah. I, I don't want to miss this gig. And she started praying. And when I got there, it's like, the, the I sung better than I think I've ever sung. That's awesome. I take steroids. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> He's full uh, of jokes. Oh, man, that's awesome. Uh, um, when you mentioned faith, which was is, uh, is usually one of our questions we talk about, is how your faith has played a role. I know you said you grew up in the church singing yes. or, and, and whatnot. Uh, if you can expand on that any other than... Uh, what we talked about. Yeah. I truly believe in prayer. I really do. I believe, um, I just believe in having integrity, being honest. Um, I pray a lot, a lot, a lot about, you know, even before we go like on a gig, sometimes if I forget that I haven't prayed, I like, I hurry up and say a prayer like silently, even while we're on stage, you know, I said, you know, Lord, just bless us to, you know, be one to communicate together, you know, to, uh, you know, just for the people to, you know, get a, a joyful experience out of what we're doing, you know, because I, I get a joy out of doing this. And just when the, somebody comes to me, like we had one gig at Rafino's and um, the couple came to me and they said, we took our friend out tonight because she just, you know, had gotten diagnosed with uh, cancer. And she said that this is just you just don't know what you've done for our friend. And when I hear stuff like that. That just, man, I rode all the way home that night crying and just praying, mm -hmm. you know, and I've never seen them again, but I've just been praying for her that, you know, she would be healed and that she would be, you know, okay. Because I do believe in healing and I do believe, you know, I, that's the way I was raised. I well, really you really do gra gravitate towards Sharoma because she's a very positive <laughs> spirit. She really is. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and I love people. Have been, uh, I really do. <laughs> she glows. <laughs> she, she does. Yeah, and I yeah. love she does. people. But we always say on the show, we've said it in just about every show, last few episodes, is that you know, music is the is the healer, is the, it is. the common yes. language and and the healer of all. You know, maybe that's why some people going back to our earlier conversation feel the way they do about musicians versus other people. Yes. You know, in a church, it can be healing or cannot be exactly it can be destructive as well. True. You know? Like anything but, uh, else. <laughs> it's bound on your faith or your uh, of the devil. No. Uh, it's, uh, maybe it's, it's, uh, uh, it's like I said earlier, I'm no. like a spiritual <laughs> agnostic uh, in the way that I, uh, I yeah. try to live by the golden rule, try mm-hmm. to treat yeah. people the way I want to be treated and uh, try to do right by people. And uh, But I don't belong to any religious denomination, so yeah. to speak. And, mm-hmm. um, I'm not a real church-going guy, I must admit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, but like I said, I, you know, I, I try to uh, live by the golden rule, and yeah. and uh, and I do take time to kind of meditate and think about, you know, give thanks for the things I have, my family, um, things like that. And I think, I think sometimes you got to sit quiet and think about those yeah. things you know yeah you have to yeah. have that time to decompress and, yeah. and recharge and it always makes a big difference in the way i feel you know it really does when oh. i can sit there and just ponder the things i have to be thankful for and so you know it's uh that's my religious experience yeah. i guess awesome well yeah. the local music scene how do y'all feel about the local music scene is it growing oh, is it growing. uh shrinking or what's what's <laughs> happening around there i know we got the festival international coming yes up. i'm excited about that yeah. and we got the jazz fest <laughs> and uh, i heard that the rolling stones couldn't make it and that led zeppelin oh. was getting together oh to, re- really? to replace oh, the rolling Led's stones at zeppelin. jazz fest oh. I didn't hear that. No, that's yeah. awesome. They were mm. doing a reunion show. We're going to do wow. that at Jazz Fest. So I'm just going to be performing at the... Uh, Blue Monday, fe- yeah. You no, know, Festival yes. International. Festival Blue International, Monday yes. Band. Mm-hmm. Yes. With the Blue, I'm Blue Monday Band, which I think is going to be a great show. Oh, but look, yeah. there's some really good players on this Monday uh, yeah. oh, Monday night yes. band. There's, Blue Monday, yeah, it is. Blue Monday, I'm yes. sorry. Blue Monday. Uh, really good <clears> players. Some of Lafayette's best, I think. Oh yes, um, I'm excited. Jay Scarron's gonna be I'm on stage with to us see too. The show yeah, mm-hmm. Jay Scarron, she's a, she's awesome too. She's gonna be yeah. on stage with us. Yeah, I'll, I'll yeah. contact her a few times. Oh, okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. She's a busy girl right yeah. now. She's doing yeah. really well. So. That's good. That's good. I'm glad everybody <clears throat> in the area is. is and that's is something picking. I wanted. To I've seen do. some some uh, musicians, like say in that Blue Monday group. The last couple times we went was oh yes impressive. I really yeah. enjoyed oh, being yes. there. Oh yes, that's why I say the local scene. It is growing. It really is. This is, it's just rich with local talent and I always put on my Facebook you know support local yeah. you know because yeah. there are there's so many artists so many you know just talented artists that even mm-hmm. do original you know music and yeah. that's what I want to eventually get into yeah. is writing my own music um, like my daughter Gabrielle Reinhardt she writes her own music and uh, mm-hmm. she's awesome and plays mm-hmm. guitar mm-hmm. so you know, know she gives me some pointers what's, but what's her number <laughs> She's awesome. Yeah, get her on. <laughs> you have to yeah. meet her, yeah. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Definitely. You know, and that's what the show is about, is about talent. It's just is local talent, is Louisiana talent. You know, oh, whether yeah. you can draw or okay. play an instrument, you well, can be a welder that makes home. sculptures or uh, a cook, somebody you don't even have to be known, or you don't have to cook at a restaurant. All if right. you got a good dish and you want to come cook it on the show. We have a uh, comedian, Jared Giller. He's going to come back and cook for awesome. us, and we're going to talk to Jared again. Maybe we'll have your daughter come to yeah. that Jared. And my son's a dancer. He graduated from UL uh, and there dance. You go. <laughs> so, Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and we're loaded with talent down here. That's we what, are. We're loaded with talent. That's what it's all I about. I love it. And like I said, Blue Monday has enabled us to really meet, because a lot of people that I didn't even know, you know, local, that, you know, that are awesome, talented, and a lot of us, we show up at each other's shows and support one another. Yeah. We'll sing at each other's shows. So, yeah. you know, that's just how we are. Even at Blue Mondays, we'll end up on stage singing. They're like, come on up. You know, and it's like everybody and it ends up being like a major, like a concert. Yeah. So I said, if people can come out and enjoy it, just, I mean, come out and see what we do. Even during a festival, uh, International, April yeah. 25th, that Thursday night, 
will be on stage and I mean just come mm -hmm. and see what we do it's like a big jam session with a lot uh, of local artists the next one is uh, is next Monday is it? it is yes is that, the, is the Rock and Bowl again is that the Rock and Bowl, the rock and bowl yes yeah. Monday yes. night the fifth yes. on the big stage yeah. yeah it's a big deal it, it really, really is it's growing Right. And it's for a good cause, you know, it helps a lot of the musicians that have already retired, yeah. you know, and need help, you know, with their finances, with, you know, their medical, yes. you know, yes. bills and things like that. So it's for a good cause. Well, well it might be time for me to apply for this. <laughs> <laughs> yep, you, you may be eligible. Yeah, <laughs> you can talk to Mr. Williams. <laughs> uh, oh, go sing yeah. for me uh, this Monday night. Uh, there you go. There you go. Uh, so what's Grits and Gravy got coming up? Y'all got any other besides mm -hmm. some, what, what shows y'all have any? Let's see. Thursday we have Rafino's. Uh, mm -hmm. Friday I'm actually doing two shows. I'm back in Sarah at uh, mm -hmm. Agave uh, in Youngsville. And then uh, Sharon and I are going to be at uh, Glory's that night. <laughs> and yes. then uh, oh. the next night I'm playing again with Sarah at uh, Legends Pub. Yeah. Yeah. We're doing a little three piece thing over there. And but me and me and Sharona play all over the place. I mean we play the legends, we play uh some of the Gave gigs, mm -hmm. we play a La Triomphe, mm -hmm. um N seventy seven and Baton. N seventy seven and Baton. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. We just did that gig. Really That's fun. That's a fun place. place. Great great place. Mm -hmm. Um Y'all need to uh, send send us information when y'all play and put it on our Facebook page or send me a link and yeah. we'll repost it on okay, Facebook. Yeah. But, we have a section of our website, still working on it. Sorry, guys, it's not up yet. Yeah. But uh, where you guys will go in, you become a member on the website, and you'll be able to post your shows and it'll all be on one page. I would love to do that. And I have another Connect section that we're working on that'll be musicians looking for other musicians. If you're a wow. band, you need a drummer or you need a saxophone player, if you need somebody That's to sit awesome. in for a gig, you can go and post a note there. Hopefully we can channel everybody to the site. Yes. That site is laentx.com. Uh, you can go there. We're also on um, Patreon. You become a member on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash L-A-E-N-T-X. You'll get a free t-shirt. and You'll get some other stuff. We have some behind-the-scenes footage that's going to be posted only on Patreon. So if you're a member, you'll get access to that footage. But uh, if you like what we do, you like the show, go there, support us, sign up. Uh, any shout-outs? <laughs> uh, I'd like to give a shout out to all the uh, club owners that give us work and, uh, yes, thank you. <laughs> and all the musicians who support us because there's a good community of musicians around here. Yes, there no is. No doubt about it. We all try to help each other and uh, support each other. Just like, for instance, Sharona just covered for Sarah and then I'm right. covering for Sean uh, <laughs> Saturday, uh, Friday afternoon mm -hmm. so we all try to help each other out yes. you know which is really neat i think you know it's uh mm -hmm. it's not a competitive thing like it used to be in yeah. old days to me you know so yeah. i think uh, people have a lot more high-minded idea about how we should proceed as musicians and work together and make the market better for everybody <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh you're saying i was a kid at one time <laughs> i remember that <laughs> you do <laughs> vaguely <laughs> Shout outs. Oh dear, let's see. Shout outs to my bestie, which is Pauline Ryan, because she's always there for me, even just working behind the scenes, buying me stuff for my throat if I need it, if I get horse bringing me soup, mm -hmm. just whatever. And uh, of course, my children, all, they're always my support Gabrielle, Jeremiah, James, and Miriam. Nice. <laughs> and also, Cherie. Uh, I always want to call her Sharice, but she's Paulette. Paulette Sharice, I love her because she's yeah. genuine, she's sweet, and she's always supportive, always wanting to help, you know, with whatever she yeah, can help Paulette with. Paulette is a and great she, girl. She, I love she's her. Really, she's, yes. She's a genuine. part of that music community I yes, was describing. Yes. It was just everybody tries to help each other. So yeah. She's one of those people, real good, real yes. good soul. Just genuine, yes. Yeah. Awesome. Yes. Well, y'all look for the upcoming episode. This is Hoyt with the Louisiana Entertainment Experience. Y'all, <laughs> we'll see y'all next time. Y'all give a hoot and a holler to coot and a collar. Have a great day. <laughs>
did not recognize the fire burning. 